guys and welcome back to my channel my name is vuvu and this is vuvu venerate if you are new on here please consider pressing that red subscribe button down below down below and joining the family and if you are a returnee a member of the fam bang welcome back fam and thank you for joining me once more on today's first chapter friday i'm reading from none other than dudu busan is his latest book a their end this is the last book in the Somo series which came out um last week a week ago and so i thought i should sample it for you guys i've already started reading it i don't want to lie but i'm not yet done but i am also doing a vlog on this one so do stay tuned for that but today is about the first chapter so if you're curious to see what that one is about do stay tuned so Bubavena underscore reads is an amazing book reviewer also youtuber she reviews books on youtube and if i'm not mistaken she also has a blog as well so please if for your connection with literature get in touch with or follow at v-u-v-u-v-e-n-a underscore reads she is based in south africa and i think it is also extremely important to follow literary content creators who are based outside of who are based outside of the west and in continental africa because they do a really good job of bridging the gap we appreciate you Vuvu, for bringing us turning pages and for bringing us your booktube channel you know this is a chance for people to actually see some people that i really enjoy please consider pressing the red subscribe button down below and if you are returning welcome back fam. Vuvu, you are amazing thank you so much for your time so as always on these ones i will share with you guys what i think about the cover the cover is beautiful i absolutely love the red and the black which is very symbolic in this family for me the red is about the blood the black is about the darkness that they just can't shake off i don't understand and i am dressed according to cover today can you tell can you tell anyway so on this cover i'm not sure yes you'll be able to see there is a, a picture i want to say it's a silhouette but i don't think i'm using that word correctly but uh a silhouette i'll say of Balente from the tv series um that's kind of like faded out on the cover here uh she is the official face of Somo. yeah um and basically the rest of it is just simple it's, it's the end by judu busani dube and the Somo yeah the film series is written up here in the usual font i'll read you the back as well i don't have anything else to say about the cover I absolutely love it it also screams the elegance with these emerald earrings um that is associated with the zulu wives so i feel like it's, it's on brand the only book that really troubles me is mess because mess is a little bit shorter than these ones and i don't know why but we're not here to talk about mess so let me read you the back the back reads the end do you remember the life we dreamed of? The things we did, hoping we'd achieve that life? The blood we've spilled, the things we have survived, the bodies buried under our modest drift house. Everything, Kyle, everything we have ever done and what we did it for. Throwing your child in the fire would have given us that. A peaceful and safe life. What is he talking about? We were roaming around and I was fine with that, but you decided to bring them into our lives, the ancestors and all that. We were fine not honoring them, Kawe, because what we have they what because what have they ever done for us? Why did we have to slaughter goats and burn incense for them? Our mother chose Mopo over us. What reason did you have to honor her? Before what reason, Kawe? now they keep taking and taking from us our children Kawe, and they won't stop because the person they really want is home that's what the back reads and uh, i don't know how much you guys know about dudu but that's dudu over here in this picture and let me read you about the author it says dudu busani dube is a south african fiction author and a journalist by profession she made her mark with the three books Somo, the wife zandile the resolute and the lady his love which appeal to the average female black reader she has also written her fourth book zulu wedding which is a narrative based on a film while still working as a journalist and covering a number of high profile court cases dudu went on a journey of self-publishing her series of fiction books Somo, the series she is viewed as a writer for the everyday woman and her series has gained a huge following she was also a contributor in two anthologies black tags 
burden or want to publish by jonathan ball in 2019 and the lockdown collection published by melinda ferguson books in 2020 all right so that's that on that <coughs> <laughs> guys i'm only laughing because of the things i don't see in this book already but let me not be this person <clears throat> okay so chapter one is pretty short so this one won't be a long one it reads everything is fucked up everyone is fucked up i'm dying Kelly doesn't know nobody knows Ollie snapped Oli died my father was an asshole my mother made me what i am Remember that Masomuzaza you were before everything got fucked up, before the journey to who you have become began. That's what they keep saying to me, like it's that easy. I was 22 years old for crying out loud, a virgin who fell in love with a tall man with big eyes and a charm I could never understand or explain. I knew nothing. I have loved this man for half my life. He gave me three children along with the best and worst moments of my life. They say it like I should know who I was when I met him, as if my life went wherever he took it. Most times it was roses and diamonds wrapped in happiness. A few times it was kicks and punches laced with blood and tears. I loved him throughout. I loved him even when loving him seemed like a stupid thing to do. My eyes saw him, only him. Even when life proved to me I could look the other way, I could do better and that I deserved more. More. Life said like there is life said like there is anything more in this world than Kel. A man who would skin alive anyone who tries to hurt me and yet be comfortable being the only person who can hurt me. I have died many times and I'm Kelly's love with his penis inside me and each time his fist bruised my face and made me bleed i have born children that look exactly like him and i have sat back and watched him loving them and them loving him back i have sat back and watched this family thrive love and love and i have been proud of myself because i know it is all my doing while my friends all of them were doing youthful things and regretting them afterwards I was raising children, helping to build an empire and sitting on a throne, making rules and getting what I wanted whenever I wanted it. I acquired power and it didn't even take much, just cooking and having all of them sitting around one table eating and laughing. They needed that, someone to remind them that without each other, they were nothing. I gave them that. Before I knew it, they were all standing in a circle with me in the middle, their big eyes staring right at me, telling me they were nothing without me. I was proud of that too. I have swept scattered broken glass into one place and pieced it together into a beautiful vase in which I put flowers of love, nurturing, children and dignity. While I did that, they made money and they made it for me. I knew it. I could see it in their eyes, their depression, their, their desperation for my approval and their anxiety over the possibility of waking up one morning and finding me gone. I took the hurt and the evil that came with it, the blood, sacrifice and loss, and I mastered the skill of looking away while, while at it. I have never hurt anyone who has never tried to hurt me. I live by those words. Would I love Mkhele this much if he wasn't who he is? If he didn't come with such baggage and darkness, would he even turn me on if he, had, if he wasn't so dangerous? I don't know. I don't think so. If someone had asked me these questions when I was 22, before I looked up and saw a tall man in front of me, before I sat on the front seat of a taxi and heard a Mascandi song, before I couldn't stop a smile from reaching my lips and before I sat on the front seat of that dodgy sprinter, Maybe I would have had a clearer answer, but I was just a girl then. I knew nothing. I had seen nothing. And I loved only two men then, my brother and my father. I've lost both along the way, my father to death and my brother to himself. And somewhere in between, I lost my Shlomo Zaza to Shlomo Zulu. I know Shlomo Zulu better because I never got a chance to know my Shlomo Zaza. Maybe she would have chosen never to get married or have children. She would have lived on a monthly salary in a basic three-bedroom house and she would have had normal people's problems like having no money for petrol and wanting to be loved unconditionally. 
Honestly, I could not relate to her. I have tried, but I don't see her anymore. Shomu, there is a way that he says my name. Like he's like he has his own meaning for it. It's like he can never ever live without saying it. How long have you been up? He asked. I've it's been a while. It's funny how things have flipped and I'm the one who can't sleep anymore. I wake up and stare at him sleeping peacefully and then dark thoughts mostly come. A few minutes, I lie. You were tossing and turning. More lies. He was sleeping peacefully. It's been four months now, but the two months before that were hell. He remains beautiful, beautiful, gray-haired, age, acquired, wisdom, and all. I had to let him back home after Mkoko's funeral. It felt like nothing else, like nothing bad had ha that had ever happened to this family mattered after Mkoko's death. It didn't look, it didn't just shred our hearts into pieces, it shredded the families too. We don't randomly gather in one house anymore because the feeling of something missing gets too consuming and we can't be who we used to be. We can never go back to that. And so here we were, and so here were Ngosana and Zandide, burying themselves in vegetable gardens and grass back in Boba. The, the Monchos were keeping Kawa busy with their unending drama. Ngoba and Gugu were trying to find their way back to each other again. Kobe's death has been a, an unmournable one. Nobody wants to accept and move on from it. Nobody wants to talk about it too, not to each other. But Nkele did. He spoke to me about Indoana, the softest one. He, we ourselves, we were just hanging by the thread when he moved back home. I didn't want him to come back, but I knew I couldn't let him be out there alone. He had to come to me to talk and cry. Besides, I too needed him. I needed his vulnerability and his tears because I have none. The pain of losing Mkoko sits like a hard rock in my belly. But the guilt of knowing that I was the reason behind all of it haunts me every minute I'm awake. It keeps me awake at night. I should have stopped him from doing whatever he was trying to do with Lale, but I didn't. Because him being away, doing stupid things wherever he was meant there was no chance of him accidentally telling someone what he knew. And so one evening he got on his bike, chased the moonlight and never returned. And for him, because I knew his brother was his world, I nursed him Kale back into being human for two months full. And then one morning he woke up different, eyes alive. He spoke more than four words. He ate his breakfast without being begged to. He went out to shave his hair and beard and he didn't grab a beer from the fridge. Instead, he washed one of his cars with his teenage twins and went out to get ice cream with his daughter. At night, we made love and he wrapped his arm around my shoulder as I lay my head on his chest and then he fell into sleep, a deep and peaceful sleep. It was like something came and took whatever was wrong with him and gave him peace, the peace I once had. I did not sleep at all that night. I'm used to it now. We have to leave in the in three hours and I have not slept at all. We're not going with him, Klom, he says. We can't. He goes back to sleep. I'm not understanding this. It's 7 a.m. There was a time when he couldn't sleep past 4 a.m. That's the end of chapter one. <coughs> let me let me put my bookmark back where it belongs, child, before I lose my spot. I will say this, and obviously I'm saying this as a person who has hindsight. That was probably the softest chapter I've read so far in this book, and I'm nearly halfway there. Anyway, without saying much more, I don't want to spoil this book for you, but I do have a vlog coming up, and I will definitely do a review of this one for you guys as well. Um, if that first chapter of the last book in the film series was anything that interested you or piqued your interest in any way please do comment down below and let me know how you feel about that otherwise i can't believe it's the end i really can't believe it's the end but i hope you enjoy this last um what installation of the series and i hope you enjoyed this first chapter friday as well and until next time thank you so very much for tuning in choosing me and all that good stuff don't forget to like share comment and subscribe bye now